Hi and welcome to my channel. Now a little while ago, just a few videos back, I've done uh, some capacitor testing, testing some 50 year old capacitors and see how they stand value wise now to what they should be back then. And uh, I used a cheap uh, capacitance meter, well, it's a multi-tube, does transistors, etc, diodes, all that kind of stuff, resistors. I used a cheap meter and people pointed out this is a cheap meter, it's not going to be very accurate, but I feel, still think it gives some kind of indication of uh, how far these capacitors they are out, you know what I mean, otherwise they would have measured exactly the same as a new capacitor, uh, which I kind of done a demonstration against, a new one against the old one, and there was a difference there, so they are slightly out or way out depending how you want to see it, uh, but I've ordered another capacitor, a uh, little reader, uh, a dedicated one, it's only cheap still and apparently this is supposed to be pretty good, this is supposed to be pretty accurate, uh, it's quite accurate, even against a really expensive one. So um, I'll do that uh, when it arrives. I'll come back to them capacitors. We'll do a comparison of what they should be with this new little meter and what they read on the old meter as well, so we can see how far that is out, if it was out, all that kind of stuff in another video, I think. But uh, just very quickly talking about capacitors, but I will do another video, only a short one, because just to bring it to attention, something I think people should know maybe is to check the manual. Uh, I was quite surprised, to be honest. You were saying that uh, I think someone did actually mention that sometimes... Uh, they put in a more bigger value capacitor than is necessary or you know the one that's in there may be a 100 microfarad and uh, it may only need a 50 microfarad that kind of thing uh, and I was surprised to hear that and I thought oh well fair enough and uh, when I come to start doing this recapping it etc at the old menu lucky enough and in the menu I was quite surprised to see here that um, and it kind of drew it to my attention saying I didn't really know to be honest with you mostly when you see here it says like resistors plus or minus 10% capacitors plus or minus 10% so if you're going for a I don't know 100 microfarad capacitor when you come to read it, it could be 90 it could be 110 that's acceptable you can stick that in no problems at all but um, yeah on some of the capacitors here not so I'll do a separate video on that but so looking at the manual uh, for instance there's a 220 microfarad capacitor here and it says minus zero so it mustn't be any less than 220 but it can be plus 100 so that can be a 440 microfarad capacitor so just saying, I thought, you know, draw your attention to. So uh, if, you, you know, if you're taking capacitors out, whipping them out, maybe you just want to see what other ones you can use. And I'm wondering if that would make any difference in a sign of uh, sound signature as well. Uh, that'd be, it was all interesting stuff, really, like, you know, to be 100% out kind of thing, or within a tolerance of 100%. But it's only one way. It's only in the positive direction. It can't be anything less. So, for instance, another 47 microfarad capacity here. It can't be any less than 47 but you could put 100% on that, for, sorry, 4.7 that is. It, it can't be any less than 4.7, but it could be uh, 9.4, not that it was a 9.4 capacitor, but um, yeah, it could be up to 9.4 kind of thing. So, um, you know, just to draw it to your attention, but uh, not everyone's gonna watch this video, so I think I'll do a separate video on that, and that, that's, that's out of the actual official manual for this receiver. Okay, uh, let's get on to what I've done now. I've got replaced every audio capacitor, uh, yeah, every capacitor in the audio department, uh, that is the main amplifier board and also in the preamp. Uh, there's a couple of capacitors still missing that I haven't got that didn't arrive. Uh, they kind of got lost for the tuner. Uh, but we're not going to talk about the tuner, though it does sound fine. It's only a couple of capacitors. I don't think they're going to make much difference because I've replaced a lot of capacitors in the tuner as well. Just waiting for a few more now. So, uh, you know, what kind of effect did this have? Right, let's have a little look of uh, the boards inside there. I've actually done the work on the two main boards in the audio department. There's the preamp. Uh, and it's just six capacitors there, and I changed the audio path ones, um, the little one microfarads. Uh, I think there's four of them on that board. I changed them to uh, Nichicon Ultra Fine Gold. And if we look at the other board, oh, and also uh, the other capacitors I used is so mainly I've used here yeah, Ultra Fine Gold on the audio part. I'll, I'll tell you which ones they are, and then all the other parts they have been Rubicon capacitors, though I'm not too sure. Uh, what model number, what manufacturer number Rubicon they are, there's just that samide in the drawer. They're all the kind of same kind of batch, you know, when I ordered them, all the same kind of ones, just different values, but uh, I can't remember what the actual product code is, but uh, they're all rated at 105C. Uh, I don't know if that's going to help, probably not a lot, but uh, they're the ones I kind of uh, used. And the, the other ones are, is Ultra Fine Gold uh, by uh, Nichicon. So on the main board, the two coupling capacitors, Ultra Fine Golds, and the uh, one little microfarad ones, the coupling ones there, I think there's four in total, uh, I used ultra fine gold. Other than that, it's all Rubicon capacitors, apart from the power supply capacitors, which are, I'm not too sure they actually pronounce this, so I'm going to spell it out, E-L-N-A capacitors. Uh, and in this particular model, and actually doubled up on them, they're, they're supposed to be a thousand, I've done 2,200. And in this particular model, 
uh, they were all, every capacitor in here was ELNA when I took them out originally. But a lot, so I stuck to fine golds because I quite like them. I've tried them with a few others and they seem to sound okay, sound pretty, you know, pretty all right. And kind of give a little bit more extra eye in detail. So I quite like that. So um, they're the kind of ones I've gone along with. Uh, and to be honest with you, I've, I've looked around a few you know, places where uh, people do audio upgrades, a few channels on, on YouTube. I'm not going to mention them in a few shops on YouTube, etc. Uh, and when they've got stuff, you know, when they stick a video up, they sometimes show a picture of inside the amp, etc. Uh, and a lot of them that do repairs, and they're quite renowned, they're quite a, a well-known kind of uh, shop, uh, selling stuff, uh, been recapped and that, and they do use these ultra-fine golds a lot, so uh, they must be quite uh, respected or, or, you know, single capacitor that people kind of use. Obviously, you get all different kinds of capacitors. You can do a lot of experimenting. You know, if you've got the time and the money to buy all these extra capacitors, it is worth doing, I suppose, but just be a bit careful that sometimes if you do too much soldering, then tracks and start lifting, you know, where they're kind of like glued down on the PCB. After too much soldering going on, they may lift, so you may want to put a little socket or something in there where you can swap these capacitors about without doing too much soldering. And when you've got the right one, do the main soldering. Okay, so uh, I've done that. As you can see, there's the main amplifier, like I say. So that, that's all done. Just a couple of capacitors missing the tuner, but it's working fine. Not really going to review the tuner anyway. It's all about the amplifier and the preamp kind of side of this. Uh, so when I first did this, uh, I changed like half the capacitors when I come to test them capacitors in a previous video. Uh, and I said, oh, it's, it's really opened this up. You know, the, the space, it's, 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 it's kind of opened it up 40%. This is the main kind of thing I got out of it. You know, I was kind of wowed by how much space uh, around the instruments and how much space I've got in this uh, little uh, little, what's it, little receiver, how much it's given me for that partial upgrade, just a partial, I'm probably about halfway in then, because uh, there's about 30 odd capacitors in this, it's quite a lot really, I was quite surprised how many capacitors are involved, even in the amp there's quite a lot, I mean some of them are the tuner, but even in the amp there's quite a lot, and you get some amps uh, that's not got a lot of, you know, get a little small amp, it's not got a lot of capacitors, maybe five or six per channel or something like that, so you're changing about 12 and that's it, all done, but in here's quite a lot of capacitors. Anyway, they've all been changed. And like I say, about halfway through, I'm turning about all this space. And I think it's about 40% extra and all that. And it is hard to judge how much you've improved something if you have to put a percentage on it. You can, you can kind of describe what you've improved. But then you know, people do ask, and I've had questions in the past, so I've come up with an answer. How much of a percentage has it changed? I said, oh, about 40%. Um, I could be a bit out there, and I could well be a bit out. And after a bit more listening than that, I always said between 20 and 30%. I've settled down. The, the initial impact is kind of, I've, I've kind of absorbed that, if you, if you know what I mean. Uh, a bit like going to see something you've never seen for the first time. You think, oh, that's amazing. Then after you kind of kind of start picking a few bits out of it kind of thing, uh, and you realise it's, it's still amazing, but not quite as amazing as you first thought kind of thing, that kind of stuff. So I sat back and had a good listen before I thought, I thought I'd do, before I have this extra bit of recapping, because I thought I don't want to go too far, it may go too far in one direction, it's going to sound terrible kind of thing. So I did have a listen, I think in myself, but well, it's probably 20 or 30%, but there is a difference, there's a difference you could hear, definitely, it's something that, you, you know, you could have to, it's something that you're not got to really listen out for, it is very apparent to you. I did do the Sansu 331, and I said that improved about 10 or 15%, and that's probably about right. It's probably more like the 10 to, you know, it's definitely 10 to 15, maybe a bit more on the 10 side, but there is a difference there. It can be heard, uh, but it was more apparent, like I say, on this here, and it's really hard to put a percentage-wise on thing, but uh, what you do get out of it, like I say, you do get that extra detail, that extra fine detail starts to come through. This didn't sound so bad. I, I quite like this before i done the recap. You know, I did a little review, and I quite like the sound of this. It's a quite, for five watts, it's quite a nice sounding little receiver and it gave a nice sound, so I was pretty pleased with it. But just putting these extra capacitors in now, uh, now I've recapped it fully. It hasn't made it any, uh, hasn't given any more space or anything like that. That's kept the same now. For, you, know, for, for, you know, I thought that may extend a bit. I thought that may be going, keep on going and it's, I'm going to say, oh, it's 60, 70%. It's, it's just added so much more space and it's just got crazy. It's just kept on multiplying as we went along. It hasn't, it's pretty much kept it as it is, uh, space-wise it's still, but it's added that extra top end detail that where them little, them little tinkles are coming in kind of thing, rather than being a little bit mushed up and um, a little bit harsh, they've kind of like given a bit more resolution. This is where it's more apparent you're getting a bit more top end and it's more apparent. It is there sound clearer than what it did before. It's more of, you know, more of a clearer sound. 
And like I say, it's got this extra space now, which is great around stuff. I mean, it's not going to be on every single track you play because it depends how that track's recording. But if that track's been recorded nicely and they've kind of done it, so each instrument's got its own space and all that, and it's got that three dimension to it, you're going to hear that. If it hasn't got that, then, you know, if it's a bit of like one of these, sometimes you get these compilations, I buy these compilation CDs, and I'm not too sure how these have been recorded. Some of these have been pretty much recorded. I would have done, you know, I'd say quickly and cheaply, shall we say. So, you know, the record you're playing, it, it doesn't sound, it sounds okay, but you're not getting all that extra detail, space, that kind of thing. It's, it's less apparent because it's a quick recording, a cheap recording kind of thing. They may have just recorded off a record or something like that. I'm not too sure where they got it from, if one of some of these old compilations, etc. So it's got to be a record that's been produced properly or a CD that's been produced nicely. You're going to you're going to appreciate it, you know, it's coming through it, it's going to pick out them extra details, just wanted to get that, but let's don't get carried away here, what I'm saying is, this isn't suddenly going to replace, this is, I'll have to recap this, this is as good as a 2000 band amplifier these days, it isn't, that, that's for certain, as you go along, you know, I've kind of done this channel, as you go along, I've started at the bottom end, and I've kind of picked out the best bottom end stuff from the worst bottom end stuff, if you can see what I mean. So, for instance, I know Pioneer may have built out their bottom of the range amp, which was 60 quid back in 1980, shall we say, like 75 or whenever. And I picked the Sansui amp at 60 quid back then. So, they're that kind of price bracket. They're selling for the same kind of money on eBay. You know, that, that 60 pound amp, that Pioneer may be 100 quid these days, and that 60 quid. Uh, saying soon maybe a hundred pound and I'm just saying which is the best out of the two they're on the same ladder footing not one amp ain't selling for 300 pound and the other one's selling for 30 quid because you would expect that 300 pound one is going to sound better than the 30 quid one you're going to be very surprised if it's the other way around but it, 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 it can happen obviously so you know just on a level par with the bottom end kind of ranges most of this stuff is in the is the bottom end it's, it's, it's the first one they've brought in that ladder of, of receivers or amplifiers and I'm just picking out the better ones from the worse ones, shall we say, there's no such word as worse, I better not say that, my missus is going back, the worse ones from the better ones. So that's what I'm doing in that price range, in that level. And this is above that, you know what I mean, this is above that, this is, this is another little step up, but obviously a £2,000 amp of that is, 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 we're going quite a way up the ladder now. So I just want to bear that in mind, I don't want you to think, we better rush out and get one of these. I'll get something to recap it. This is going to sound absolutely fantastic. The way Mick's talking about it, this is going to be a two thousand pound amp. Well, it isn't. It isn't. You know, what I mean, it's as simple as that. If you want to, you know, if you want the sound of a two thousand pound amp, we'll go out and buy a two thousand pound amp. But this still gives you a good sound. Everything's clear. You know, it's it's, it's just it's no it's no effort to listen to this. It's nicely presented and everything else. I would say, I did say in that thing also, that the mids have just come up slightly as well, and I think that's happened, it's, it's, it's stuck to that as well, the mids have just come up slightly as well, the voices are nice, they're pure, they're silky kind of voices, they're nice and smooth, but you know, when I compare it to the 101, voice wise and some instrument wise and that, the 101 is still a better amp still, you know, it's a little bit better, I wouldn't say it's vastly better, but it's a little bit better, it's just got that extra kind of timbre, you know, you can hear it in their voice, you can hear it in the instruments and that kind of thing, just gives that, it's got a little bit more resolution to it, and it's just got, um, yeah, it's, it, 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 it just it gives, it gives a more, you know, as that instrument's more lively rather than being maybe just smoothed off a little bit kind of thing, where this kind of just smooths it off a little bit, and that one, without getting harsh, gives that just an extra bit more detail, that extra bit more texture, that kind of stuff. Uh, to the sound so you know if I compare this like I said in that video uh, previously I'm halfway through I was going to stick it on eBay to sell or well, now I've done this you know it sounds really good it's not for sale anymore I've still got others to go through I may get around to selling it I may not but you know it, it, it definitely sounds better this is what I'm saying I've done the recap it definitely sounds better we could see how far them caps are were out and hopefully I'm going to show you with the problem and a better meter, a meter that's more precise uh, how far they were out as uh, in a future video so you know all in all the 101 is an hard amp to beat on that level it is an hard amp to beat on that level don't forget it's on the bottom run it's the first one in their chain of amps 101 i think it went 505 and there was a 222 hovering around i'm not too sure exactly how that fitted i did have that amplifier and to be honest with you i did i've got rid of the 222 the sensu a222 i still prefer the 101 over the amplifier they're margins they're small margins but i've got a pick I've got to try and get rid of some stuff. I've got to pick one against the other, and there's small margins. It's a bit like, uh, these, these are close, these are not far out. You know, if I was to compare that 101 maybe with uh, no, a, a, one of the Pioneers or something like that, you know what I mean, that weren't so good. Or for instance, I, I bought a Marantz, was it 6006 or something? 
which was okay, weren't nothing fantastic. If I was to compare it with that, this is, you know, the Sansu 101 is miles better kind of thing. It's like uh, putting up Usain Bolt against someone that's, you know, so you can do it in 10 seconds where someone else is going to take 15, that kind of stuff. So these are pretty close. Where Usain Bolt's going to do it in 10 seconds, one of these apps may do it in 9.9. .9. We're talking about little little deviations here, little bits, but they are apparent, they are noticeable. Uh, and, you know, I've got to pick one against the other. So, you know, I'm definitely going to, the 101's a stay out. It's not going anywhere, the 101. It's, it's probably one of the, it's, it's, out of the amps and bits and pieces I've got, it's probably the best amp I've got. You know what I mean? It, it probably is. It's, well, it's in the top three anyway, definitely. So that's one I'm definitely keeping. I, I, I quite like this. I've, I've made an improvement on this recap, and it, this is what the video, this particular video is about. There is an improvement on there. It's about 20, maybe a 30% improvement on the original one as probably them capacitors you could tell I've put some newer capacitors I've put some fine golds in there it should bring out that little extra detail so all in all it was you know it was a job well worth doing I think and uh, whether I keep it as my final three I'm going to keep I'm just going to keep three amplifiers and the Sansu 101 is definitely going to be one of them so we've got two more to go uh, and it's a bit awkward because I've got a Sansu 331 and I've got a Sansu 441 so and I don't really want to let either of them go but uh, one of them may well be going I don't know but um, so that's it um, hopefully you got something out of that. It's definitely an improvement uh, in this amplifier. This is what it was about. Um, also, just one more thing. I felt I felt the sound stage was more rock solid as well on there. Once I've done that recap, it kind of like when the singers got to be in front, you know, back and, and the instruments at a certain place, they just stay there like they're rock solid. It's a rock solid stand stage as well. Uh, but they don't get carried away. This is only five watts a channel, but it's quite a, a punchy and. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say loud, it goes to a reasonable volume. We're not going to go much to halfway because it's only five watts. It's, you know, it's going to start losing its way, a bit like the 101. It does a good job on a low to kind of medium-ish, maybe a little bit higher than medium volume. But as soon as you start turning it too far, then it's going to lose its way a bit. It's going to lose control a bit. So don't forget that. You know, these are not amps to have, you know, if you're one of these poo persons who's got to have it full on kind of thing and shake the house, then I think you want a more powerful, more wattage amplifier. But if you're a person that's got you know, a medium-sized room uh, and um, once it's at a reasonable level, but don't want to get carried away, then these are fine. These these are fine. These are going to give you some uh, you know really good sounding uh, sounds for the money kind of thing for what you're paying for them. And you know, don't forget where they are in the ladder as well. I just want to emphasize that because some people I think just well, this is a bit more longer than I thought this video. Some people are paying a little bit more over the top now for some of these amplifiers. Even you know, saying so this 101 200 pound I think. I've seen one for, that's probably about where it sits, maybe between one and 200, somewhere around there. So if you're getting one in that price bracket, I think for that kind of money, you're getting yourself a reason back. But uh, I see the 331, I think it was, or the 441, go for 330 pound recently. It's still not bad, but I think you're paying a little bit too much for it. So keep it real, you know, don't suddenly go, think, oh, I've got to pay 300 quid, this is really good. Don't go over the top, you know what I mean? Keep it realistic. I know things are going up these days. Things have kind of crept up a bit now recently in the old i5, uh, second-hand i5 vintage items have seem to have crept up in value. Some of them 50, some of them gone up 100% uh, over the last year or so. But, you know, keep it real. Don't get carried away. And you know, Because I think some people may start thinking, that, you know, because I mentioned it and maybe other channels are mentioned in these units. Not that many people probably take notes of me, but other people are mentioning these units. Quite a lot of people you see Sansu everywhere now that they maybe, you know, don't get carried away. Where, where there was like a reasonable price level, they're creeping up and it can't come to a stage when you're bidding too much for what you're getting. There is other units and other pieces out there that's going to sound better for the same money. For instance, £330, I think that 331 or 441, for that kind of money, you probably get a 771 or an 881. You know, at the lower end, you may get a low bid and, and about a bag one of them, and they're going to be better units. You know what I mean? They're going to be better units. Okay, so that's it. Uh, enough of the waffling. Until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.